Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel of Medical Biochemistry. Today we learn about one of the most important compound lipid that is phospholipids. So wh when we are asked about the phospholipids, we must study under the headings of definition and classification of phospholipids, structure of different phospholipids, functions and clinical importance of phospholipids. So starting with the definition, as we all know the lipids that means it must contain at least one molecule of fatty acid along with one molecule of any type of alcohol. So these two commonly known as the lipids. Here the name is phospholipids that means along with the lipid it contains the one molecule of phosphoric acid that's why it is known as the phospholipids. Now we go to the classification of phospholipid. So phospholipids are mainly classified on the basis of alcohol present in it. So one is the glycerophospholipid which contain the glycerol as a alcohol and second one that is sphingolipids which contain the sphingosine as a alcohol. This is a plasmalogen which is one of the variant of glycerophospholipid that I will discuss later on. Glycerophospholipid again classified on the basis of nitrogenous glycerophospholipid and non-nitrogenous glycerophospholipid that we are learning in next slide. So starting with the glycerophospholipids. So as I told lipids that means it contain at least one molecule of fatty acid, it contain at least one molecule of any type of alcohol which is bound to the molecule of phosphoric acid and as a alcohol it contains the glycerol that's why it is known as the glycerophospholipids. So this is the most common or the basic structural component of all the glycerophospholipids. So it is the backbone of all the glycerophospholipid. It is a phosphatidic acid. So it contains the one molecule of glycerol that is as an alcohol two molecules of fatty acids and one molecule of phosphoric acid. So this is commonly known as the phosphatidic acid. So glycerophospholipid are classified as the nitrogenous and the non-nitrogenous right. So starting from the nitrogenous glycerophospholipid so first one that is phosphatidylcholine which is otherwise known as the lecithin. If you see the structure of lecithin, you will find the one molecule of phosphatidic acid that is a basic structural unit of glycerophospholipid which is bound to the choline. Here you can see this is the molecule of phosphatidic acid which is bound to the choline. Here you can see there is a one molecule of nitrogen in the structural formula of choline. That's why it is classified under the heading of nitrogenous glycerophospholipid and it is the most important pulmonary surfactant and it is also present in the various cell membranes. Second one in the nitrogenous that is phosphatidylethanolamine which is also known as the kephalin. It is same as the phosphatidylcholine but instead of choline it contains the ethanolamine as a substitute so phosphatidic acid plus ethanolamine combinedly from the phosphatidyl ethanolamine and which is commonly found in the membranes of brain in the nervous tissues. Third one that is phosphatidyl serine same as the phosphatidyl choline ethanolamine there is a serine in place of choline or ethanolamine so phosphatidic acid plus serine will form the phosphatidyl serine. It is the most important component of the thromboplastin which is the one of the factor in the coagulation pathway and it also founds in the cell membranes. Okay, so that is the function of phosphatidyl serine. So after nitrogenous there is a non-nitrogenous glycerophospholipid. 
so again instead of serine instead of choline instead of ethanolamine that is the molecule that is inositol so this part will remain same that is phosphoridic acid which is bound to the inositol right so here you can see there is a no nitrogen molecule in the structure that's why it is known as the non nitrogenous glycerophospholipid it is a phosphoridic inositol which is one of the non nitrogenous glycerophospholipid which acts as a second messenger that i will discuss in the clinical part in second non nitrogenous that is diphosphoridyl glycerol as the name suggests it is di that means two phosphatidyl that means phosphatidic acid so two molecules of phosphatidic acids are joined together by the glycerol which is also known as the cardiolipin so because it is it was first isolated from the cardiac muscle and it is also present in the inner mitochondrial membrane which is the most important site for the respiratory chain otherwise it is known as electron transport chain so in the structure you can see that there is a two there are two molecules of phosphatidic acid which are joined together with the help of glycerol again you can see here there is a one molecule of whole glycerol two molecules of fatty acid one molecule of phosphoric acid so this is one molecule of phosphatidic acid this is same as the second molecule of phosphatidic acid which are joined together by the glycerol so this is the structure of cardio lipid so that was about glycerophospholipids now the second part that is plasmalogen this is again one of the variant of glycerophospholipid only difference is that in case of glycerophospholipid that we have seen contains the ester linkage with the fatty acid instead of that in plasmalogen you will find the ether linkage so they are same as the glycerophospholipid but they only contain the ether linkage in place of ester linkage they are the most important platelet activating factor so again they are useful for the coagulation and they are also used in the synthesis of biomembranes of brain and the muscles moving further the sphingophospholipids so same as the glycerophospholipid instead of glycerol it contains the sphingo sign of the alcohol that's why it is known as sphingophospholipids so it is a lipid that's why it contains the one molecule of fatty acid and one molecule of alcohol that is sphingo sign so that's why it is lipid it is combined with the phosphoric acid that's why it is phospholipids which is bound to the choline so fatty acid and sphingo sign is known as the ceramide and collectively whole molecule is known as the sphingomyelin which is the important component of myelin sheath so that is all about the structures of different phospholipids next that is the biological importance or what are the clinical role of the different phospholipids in the body so as we have seen it is the most important structural component it is useful for the synthesis of membranes of various cells it is just also useful for the synthesis of myelin sheath second function that is as a lung surfactant so phosphatidyl choline will act as a lung surfactant otherwise it is known as the lecithin in case of preterm delivery they will check for the ls ratio that is lecithin sphingomyelin ratio which should be more than 2 if it is more than 2 the doctor believe that the lungs have been matured enough so if lecithin is less the infant or fetus may suffer from the hyaline membrane disease that is a one type of respiratory distress syndrome so lecithin is the most important component for the lung surfactant which provide the super coiling capacity to the lungs next that is the insulatory function of the phospholipids you all know that in today's era we are using these type of bottles right when we are telling that it is a insulated one what do you mean by insulated so there is one layer 
which prevents the effect of external temperature to the inner substance that is known as the insulation right same way the phospholipid will provide the insulation to the body and then now fiber which carries the message right which carries the electrical signal so it will provide the insulation to the myelin sheets and also to the body so this is again important function of phospholipid phospholipids are degraded by the phospholipase which will form the arachidonic acid which is one of the essential fatty acid and that is very useful for the synthesis of various prostaglandins and leukotrienes so again phospholipid lipids are useful for the synthesis of arachidonic acid and thereby prostaglandin and the leukotrienes as we have seen in the structure of the phospholipid so thromboplastin again which is made up of the phospholipid and platelet membrane phospholipids and the plasmalogen they all have the role in the blood coagulation pathway and lastly the role of the phosphatidyl inositol as a second messenger in the hormone action what do you mean by second messenger some protein hormone the glycoprotein hormone cannot bear the lipid membrane right so they will hormone itself will act as a first messenger and they will send the signal to the second messenger so their functions will be carried out by the second messenger so it has very important role for the functioning of protein hormone so phosphatidyl inositol is one of the most important second messenger which is useful for many glycoproteins hormone here you can see the norepinephrine that is otherwise known as noradrenaline which is one of the glycoprotein hormone will produce the second messenger that is phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate and thereby it carries its action so phosphatidyl inositol is the one of the most important second messenger so this is all about the biological role of phospholipid just summarizing when we are asked or when we talk about the phospholipid we must speak about the definition of phospholipids we must know about the classification of phospholipid we must know the structure of the phospholipid we don't require to draw the chemical formula right but we must know it contains the phosphatidic acid it contains the choline it contains the ethanol amine likewise right and lastly the functions of phospholipid or the clinical importance of phospholipid this is very very important part right so that's all about the phospholipid thank you so much if if you like my video you can subscribe to my youtube channel that is paulin gandhi and if you have any query regarding medical biochemistry you can ask me on my email address that is powtalk p a u t a l k at the rate gmail.com thank you